One way to level up your grading is by targeting specific colors in your image para ma tweak yun siya into the palette that you really want. Like for example, if you're shooting something outside and you don't really have control of whatever is in the set design, like kunyari may dumaan, nakapula siyang shirt, tas oh my gosh, yun lang yung nakikita mo sa image, syempre, kailangan mong i-desaturate yung red dun sa shirt na yun para hindi masyadong distracting, di ba? So things like that can really help the look of your video so that it's more focused and it's always in the palette that you want it to be. Hi and hello and welcome to Tony's Color Grading Tutorial. <laughs> Joke lang. Okay, sige, ito na to. Hi everyone, I'm Tony and I'm a colorist. Today, I'll be sharing with you tips on how you can isolate your colors better. But before anything, it's important next to your machine that you have a proper display. And especially if you're a professional colorist or if you're full-time in video post-production. Why? Kasi important na calibrated yung nakikita yung kulay. Kasi kung mali yung calibration ng monitor nyo, then mali mali lahat ng mga nakikita yung image and kapag bin broadcast yun ayon kapag may release yun ayon online it's not gonna be in the colors that you intended it to be so important na tama yung kulay nyo na tinitig na yun okay so Asus has happily sent us um, lent us rather one of their nice pro art monitors so this is the PA32 UCX so these are one of those monitors that you can calibrate properly to the color space that you want. Fortunately, when you get this monitor, it also comes with a calibrator. So it's very convenient. I love it. So this monitor is 32 inches and it's a wide screen and it can show 4K, which is great because you can see all the little details on your screen. Kung maliit lang yung monitor ko, hindi hindi ko siya makikita, di ba? So important na it's a nice size and the 32 inch is a really really good size especially if you're working with 4K material so okay siya sobrang dali lang niyang i-set up with my laptop right now i'm connected to it via thunderbolt but you can also connect to it um, with an HDMI cable if you prefer that the ang maganda sa kanya actually is marami siyang ports sa likod even yung dongle ko ng Resolve ko, kasi yung Resolve version that I have, the the Resolve Studio, it was still the version with a dongle. So whenever I use it, I need to put the dongle in one of the USB. It's really nice na uh, this monitor has three USB slots at the back. I can connect my panel and then I can connect my dongle at the back. Okay, so ready and I'm a great. I got my machine. I got my display and I have here the Wave 2 tangent panel, which was lent to us by MeshLab. MeshLab is a production house who does content creation and they also have lent us this very very nice camera that we're shooting with today and it's my husband behind the camera right now who is a director also for MeshLab. First off, as with any color grading, you want to make sure your base is properly balanced. Making a neutral and vibrant base creates an image that is enough contrast between colors. This will help you discern colors better for isolating later on. After that, you can go ahead and make another node for your key. By the way, the isolated part of your image is also sometimes referred to as your key. There's no one way of doing things in Resolve, and that goes for keying as well. You can try using the other qualifier modes and see which gets you a better key. I personally use the HSL mode most of the time, mostly because I'm usually on my panel. But the 3D qualifier is actually pretty useful and works slightly different from the other modes. It's mostly using the eyedropper to select or deselect the colors you want. 
sometimes even getting two different hues together. You can't clean up your key if you can't see what you're keying. Resolve lets you change the way you view your key in highlight mode from colored to black and white. You can turn this on by going to Preference, User, Color, and checking this. It's super useful if you're trying to key something that's in the same color as the gray background. It can also help you see those stubborn solo pixels that you don't want. Parallel nodes are a great way to organize your keys. These allow you to make keys and changes to them without affecting your other nodes. This is because all your nodes are pulling information from your base node instead of getting data from each other. And don't forget to label those nodes so you don't forget what's in there. You have a bunch of feathering tools that can refine your key better. When I was starting out, I usually just blur the heck out of the keys, hoping that'll make it look better. But understanding what these blur options do specifically made my keys better. My personal favorite is Clean Black. It takes out just a little bit off the edges and gets you that tighter key. Okay, that's it guys. Those are my tips for isolating your colors better and just to say it again, these tips are only helpful if you have a calibrated monitor like the Asus Pro Art monitors. Thank you Asus for sending us this monitor to work with today and I hope you find this video very helpful. Color grading is my profession and it's also my passion. I really believe that it adds value to your video. It helps you, it really really helps you tell the story so much better. So I hope you guys enjoy color grading and thanks for watching. Ugh. <laughs>